If I had to take 10 albums to a deserted island, I would take uh, that album from Chicane with me. It just felt like the perfect record for the Balearic sunsets and the Balearic dance floors. It's actually written about the Isle of Wight, not I think. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone that. The record originally starts uh, as a down-tempo record and uh, wasn't meant to be a dance record in any shape or form. I had already started a project called Disco Citizens, which was um, my dance project. And then um, I did an EP, uh, and I was working with a guy called Leo, and we, we put this EP together, and Offshore was one of the tracks on it. And it was a chill out tune, you know, that's how it started. People like uh, Digweed and Sasha started playing the down-tempo record with a 4-4 beat, trying to play it as a, as a house record. So I, uh, I went and revisited it and um, totally remixed it and did a dance version. And um, yeah, that's kind of the early, where it began really, yeah. I think the great thing about Chicane's records and Offshore in particular is the fact that they almost sound like a chill out record with a beat underneath and I think it's a great testament to the quality of a track when it stands up in its own right when you take the kind of dancey poundy element of it out. It just had that incredible, um, that Balearic vibe, you know, I've, I've spent m most of my DJ career in Ibiza and it just felt like the perfect record for the Balearic sunsets and the Balearic dance floors. You know, always when I fly to Ibiza, or most of the flights on Ibiza, as soon as the plane uh, starts to descend, I always put on uh, uh, Overture and Offshore. The track's been synonymous with Ibiza, but the funny thing is, is that, um... <laughs> I live on the Isle of Wight, which is at the bottom of um, England, and um, it's actually written about the Isle of Wight, not I. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone that. I finished the record, and uh, I had Julesy, uh, Big Tong, um, all manner of people. The real, the, real, the real players playing it, particularly Sasha and Digweed, everyone started playing the record. Well, I think I probably got sent offshore when it first came out as a promo uh, during my time at Radio One, uh, and I was a big champion of the record. Um, so, but it stood out immediately. I mean, even then, sort of 20 years ago or thereabouts, there were just so many releases every week. And in that genre, in the trance genre, if one wants to call it that, uh, there were so many things to listen to, but uh, and one used to get the kind of vinyl at the time and go through each promo that you were sent and you rejected the majority, but that one was just accepted immediately. Uh, the record started being played on Radio 1, you know, it was a 4 minute 12 instrumental dance record in 1996 when they were playing big pop records. I always loved electronic music, but it, it was never like a commercial success and it was never something that was it got such a big audience and and I think she came proof that the sound that I was really close to my heart could also be a sound that really attracts a big audience and and that album if you listen to it today it, it, it has a it's timeless because you went from a record which was uh, incredible underground records, the next minute being on daytime radio, and that was weird. And I remember, you can't see it, but over there is an island called Formentera, uh, where we shot the videos for Offshore, you know. And um, next minute, you're a plane in Ibiza running around shooting videos, and everything goes a bit nutty, really. 
Mambo's has been a real pilgrimage for a lot of people, you know. Um, originally it was the Cafe Del Mar, of course, which is right next, do right next door. And it very much in in fact infected me. I mean, I do my, my own radio show and, and one of my brands is, is called Sunsets and it's about playing the sun down and then it starts to go up tempo and you go, and you go off into the night, which is exactly what happens at, at, at Cafe Del Mar and Cafe Mambo. And um, it's um, one of the coolest places to do that. I, I had a hard time actually saying yes to remixing Offshore because it's one of, you know, some things are, are better left untouched. I was nervous about revisiting because I've done all the tracks from, the, from that first album, but Offshore was one of those ones where it's been done a few times now. So what are we going to do different and how are we going to do it fresh and how are we going to capture the the Balearic melancholy elements of the original record and not sound like we've just taken the riff and boshed it on top of some new drums, you know. I, I say no to a lot of remixes because I have such a strong connection with it. That's why I asked Avira to join me. I guess because I had a really tough time to sort of uh, distance myself. Because if it's so personal and, and to sort of to hear like all the layers of the track, the stems, it kind of removes the magic. Sometimes I don't like to see making ofs from one of my favorite movies because it's like you, the magic sort of disappears, you know? Because like, what, Yoda's not a real creature? I want Yoda to be a real creature. <laughs> we approached it in a very delicate way, you know, because the last thing I would want to do is the people that really loved that record back in 96 go, oh, it's just another crappy dance remix. The obvious answer would have been no, but then I said to Avira, look, this is just, here's this track that I absolutely love. And I think we, we could do something, because uh, I did an EP with Avira, because uh, I love his sound so much. Um, uh, and it's the same thing with a track of mine called Mask. I, I wrote this track when I was in a really dark phase in my life. I, it, was so, it was such a negative emotion for me that I sent it to Avira saying like, look, you know, here's this emotional track. Can you please start something, send it back to me, and then maybe it will come to life in a different angle. Same thing happened with Offshore. I spent a lot of time on, on, you know, on Zoom or Skype to Armin, bending his ear saying, look, no, don't do it like that, mate. <laughs> do it like this. Uh, so, but you spend time. You end up with a product that's good. You know, it's not done overnight. I have so much respect for Nick. But he doesn't know that that track is so important to me personally. So it's like getting a Rembrandt painting and Rembrandt asking, you know, can you, you know, <laughs> can you recreate this painting? I'm like, no, the painting is perfect. I'm sure special because it was probably, um, it wasn't the first record I did that got noticed. Um, but it was the one which kind of set out the, um, the modus operandi of what I was doing. It was the one which kind of encapsulated the mood. You know, people always say, well, what's, what, what is a chicane record? And I, and I go, well, it's a record that's not really bound by any genre. It, 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 it's to do with how it makes you feel and, and, the, and the melody. And that record kind of, there's a sort of a melancholy element to that record as well. And it, it reminded me of when I was like the, you know, I used to have these big summer holidays with my, with my parents and I was the last boy on the beach, you know, and it was very, it was like the end of summer. It was tinged with sadness and sort of nostalgia. And that, the record was kind of always about that, you know, and, um, and it was good because it was the first one and we, and that's, and I've carried on in that template. Kind of, really. I mean, in fact, I want to put that on a t-shirt sometime. Euphoria meets sadness. That is the chicane way. And every chicane record does it, but does it slightly differently. In fact, very differently on occasions. If I had to take 10 albums to a deserted island, <laughs> I would take uh, that album from Chicane with me. It combines all the elements of electronic music that I love. 